uh, little, looked a little bit more involved in terms of kind of the facilitating the ball handling. What, what about this matchup or just sort of the game plan you guys had going into this one? I'll have for that. Uh, I don't, it wasn't a matchup or a game plan thing. I think it's just him continuing to grow as a player and finding uh, just ways to affect the game. He's much more uh, decisive in early transition. Uh, he has his reads. He knows what he's looking for. Uh, they changed matchups a little bit, and he handled that uh, with great grace. Um, you know, it was something that he had to get used to. So it's just him understanding what his reads are and where he can be super aggressive, and uh, he's getting better and better at that. So um, he's a playmaker for us. Uh, you know, we're a good team. So you can test Royce there at the end. Uh, what led you to do that, and, it, you know, what, what did you kind of see there that made you do that? I saw a guy going in to try to get a shot, and he hadn't made one, and I didn't want him to feel good about himself going to the bench. Gary asked me about that a month ago, and that's the bench rule. Guys don't shoot shots in front of our bench to go back to their bench to feel good about themselves. If I'm going to ask the guys that contest, the staff's got to do the same. Joe, when it came to uh, managing the lead and expanding the lead going into the second half, what drove that and what were some of the dynamics that, that led to that? Um, so tonight was kind of similar to like last year where we didn't do a great job controlling the shot margin. And so the game was relatively close because of their second chance opportunities. I thought we forced them into a lot of tough shots. Uh, I thought we did a better job. So they only had six offensive rebounds in the second half. And so when you take away uh, some of their strengths, our individual defense and our ball pressure was much better in the second half. And our one shot defense was better, which we were allowed to get out and transition and find those cross matches. And so uh, that's the whole key to us is, is really working to dominate the, the, the shot margin in different ways. It looks different every night. Uh, we weren't great at it, but we were, we were great in the second half. And, uh, you know, between that, our individual defense and uh, our shot making. And on Drew for a second, of the stars, is he the guy that has sacrificed the most offensively to make sure that everything works? How would you kind I mean, of I, I know, like, that? listen, like, everybody has to sacrifice. So it's not about, like, who, if we get into, like, who sacrifices more than me, then that's, you know, playing a victim mentality and it goes against what we're trying to build. So it's not about who's sacrificing more at the end of the day. Uh, Drew's a, a huge part of our team because of his ability to adapt and adjust and find other ways uh, to be effective, different than he has at other teams. And that's for everybody down the line, top to bottom. So we just got to keep that as the main focus. Everyone's got to do uh, things that they like and things that they're necessarily not comfortable with, so to speak, to put the team first. And our team has done that throughout the entire year. The challenge is can we continue to trust that? Uh, Joe, Jason and Jalen, uh, in terms of reading the defense, the Suns brought guys far out of three-point line to guard. Tatum and then sometimes Brown when he had a smaller defender on him he's just been in attack mode lately how's the progression you've seen from them just being able to read not only defenses in general but like game to game how different yeah. teams cover them? no they both have uh, really taken pride in that and uh, have really uh, worked to understand that uh, and so just their, their patience the balance of uh, knowing when to go early in the shot clock the balance of wanting to get to their spacing the understanding of matchup recognition coverage recognition um, all those things go into it, and uh, their pace, their patience, and their pace, and their balance of, um, you know. And I thought you saw tonight, both of them, uh, you know, they had a great balance of being aggressive and also baiting the double teams to get easier shots for other people. And it's a growth, it's a credit to them for their growth. And then over the road trip, especially Luke was doing a great job in the pick and roll, sort of like sealing bigs off while the guard had the defender on their back. We saw that a little from Tillman tonight too. How important is that for bigs? running that with the level of ball handlers you guys have in your team? Yeah, it just depends on the, the big's depth and pick and roll. You get that more uh, when guys are a little bit further back. And uh, that's just a read, and, and uh, those guys have been working on it. Joe, going back to your contest on Royce, do you know what your percentage is for the year, for physical percentage? I, I don't know, but um, I don't. Uh, when you do stuff like that, what kind of feedback have you gotten from the team about how that reinforces to them? The uh, I'm not sure that they even know. They might know now, but I'm not sure they've known up until that point. But. Um, it's just, I think it's important. I think it's a small detail of the game. It's a little gamesmanship, but it, you can't have guys going back to the bench feeling good about themselves. Joe, 31 assists tonight. You guys have had 25 or more in eight of your last 12. Was that an emphasis that you guys had coming out of the All-Star break, or is that just kind of coming naturally? Um, no. I mean, I think it's just us finding layers of, uh, layers of the offense and the defense, right? You know, so get out in early transition. Uh, you know, but uh, being able to get to different layers, you, you know, you obviously got to make the shot in order to uh, get the assist. So we'll see what our potential assist average was since that time. Um, but I think it's just more about getting to the second and third layer of the defense, having the game slow down, manipulating the matchup, and taking the best shot possible. Joe, um, it's probably going to go viral, the block, but you don't care, and it just seems like 
there's a, a certain to philosophy as long you, you're going to carry it out and you don't care what it looks like to anybody. I mean, I don't. There, there's a dead ball. I did it last year. We've done it multiple times. So I, I mean, I don't. I don't care. At the end of the day, it's about the mindset and the approach that we bring, and it's within the rules of the game. And the and, and kind of to Jared's question, like the players have to pick up on it. Like, regardless of how this looks, we're sticking to what we do. What are they going to do? I'm just saying, like that's got to yeah. be a. a it reflects positive on you. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I, there's, uh, I mean, listen, like, like question. I said, it's about just setting a tone. It's about, it's, and it's that. And so one of the biggest pet peeves is just, you know, thinking that a guy's just going to get a free shot. It's just not the way it works. And if we're going to hold our team to the standard, to hold the staff to the same thing. So, you know, our, there's been times where we've missed it and I've held the staff accountable to it. And you, know, you got to do the best job you can of not doing it. Did you find them? What did you do? The, the, just a strong conversation about what the expectations are. And with Jalen, he's not only scoring, he's reading passing Man. like a DB. He's playing like, so well, like both ends of the floor. Yeah, what is he doing to, to be able to kind of get those steals? Just processing the game. I think he's really taking a point of emphasis to uh, just, I mean, be a well-rounded player. I think his, if everything with him starts with his defensive intensity. And I think guarding one of the other team's best players and getting off to a great start on defense is what kind of gets him going. And, um, you know, I think that's big for our team. And uh, he's doing a great job of the balance, right? Like, he could score on anybody anytime. And he's taking the ones early in the shot clock when he feels like he had an advantage. And he's slowing down reading the game when he doesn't. And uh, it's been a huge uh, just growth for him. And, uh, you know, it's a different layer for our team when he's aggressive, you know, especially getting to the free throw line uh, and creating opportunities for other people. So, you know, he's playing really well-rounded basketball on both ends. It's fun to watch. Joe, along those same lines, it feels like that play where – Jalen missed the three, kind of hung yeah. around, got the steal and dunked on Grayson Allen. Feels like maybe in the past he's kind of let plays, misses, something like that kind of get to him and he'd hang his head or it, he'd get a backdoor cut on him. And it seems like that's kind of all gone away and he's hanging around. It's like, oh, I made a mistake. I'm going to make up for that mistake right. and kind of stays present. Yeah. It, 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 where does where, that growth come from? What have you seen in that regard? Uh, I think just not being defined by one particular thing. I think just moving on to the next play because you have an ability to make an impact on the game the next play. And uh, that's something that he takes a lot of pride in. Like I said, I think his uh, his pride and uh, attention to detail defensively is kind of what helps him offensively, I think. And, and he's taken full ownership of that. So when he wants, you know, because he wants to affect the game on both ends, he has a quick ability to just get to the next play because he knows he can have an impact in a way. And he's finding ways to get easy baskets. Like that's a way to get an easy basket. Um, and so he's finding different ways to score, not just like having a play called for him. And he's taking like pride in that as well, you know. Joe, uh, just 16 games left. Aside from the obvious winning those games and staying healthy, what do you want to see from your team to stay sharp, you know, heading into the playoffs in one month? Uh, just continuing to have the same approach, the same mindset. Um, you know, to me, uh, the way we play, as long as we keep an open mind, we have a trust for each other, understanding uh, winning is the most important thing, but also uh, finding ways to get better. Like, we got to watch this first half, and we got to watch the end of the game when they went to a small lineup, and uh, we weren't able to create the, the advantages as easier when they played smaller and switched. And, like, we got to watch this stuff, and we have to get better at it. So it's just not getting caught up in the result, having an understanding that every game presents a learning opportunity for us to find 10 possessions that we have to get better at, and we just got to keep that going. Did you see that surface tonight in some small ways that's that's encouraging aside from, you know, a big win in the end, the result? What do you mean? What part? Just, you know, the mindset, right? Like uh, that drove the result, the big win, but those things that you're looking for to stay sharp in the future, did yeah, they I show mean, up you tonight? Look at it, I mean, we, we didn't show film at halftime. It was just a very simple conversation of like we're up five and we're shooting 50% from three. So we're at a very critical point of the game to where if we decide to rely on just that and we don't get the shot margin back in some capacity, then we're not going to win. And if we... Uh, hold them to more one-shot possessions, and we get out and score, and then and we can control that better in the second half, then we have a chance. And so uh, just their ability to understand that. And I thought the guys did a great job. We went to some different adjustments to start the second half, and they executed really well. Al took great ownership of the communication, and they were able to get that. So to play kind of two different ways between the first half and the second half is kind of that mindset that you're talking about.